as we know, semiconductor heat structure is a key building block in modern electronics and optoelectronics. Okay, so the controlled growth of uh, high quality uh, heat structures and interface uh, is critically important uh, for achieving uh, high device performance. Okay? And such a uh, high quality interface has been uh, realized in uh, many uh, material systems, uh, such as group 3.5, uh, 2.6, and uh, group 4 semiconductors, uh, as well as outside uh, based uh, white band gap materials. Okay. And next, to further improve the device performance and uh, decrease the size of the devices, new materials uh, is needed. So recently, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> recently 2D materials uh, uh, attract uh, a lot of attention, such as uh, transition metal, detrochronize, and graphene. Uh, because of uh, several advantages. For example, they are kind of uh, structurally tunable and they have uh, relatively very high mobility, child carry mobility, even at uh, 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 nanometer uh, scale. So for example, for traditional uh, semiconductors such as silicon, uh, the child carry mobility will decrease a lot if you shrink the size below five nanometers. Uh, those materials, 2D materials, can still sustain very high mobility uh, even at uh, one nanometer VG. Okay. So, so there's lots of promising features for 2D materials and lots of progress has been made. Uh, but for those uh, charcoal based uh, uh, semiconductors and heat structures, uh, there are also uh, several challenges. For example, they are relatively hard to synthesize and fabricate. And those materials are, are quite sensitive to defects. But uh, usually those, uh, the, the current preparation method usually introduce a lot of defects that's limiting the performance of those materials. And uh, although they have uh, very good charge transport properties, the optical properties are relatively uh, poor. So they do not emit light strongly. And they, you have to make it uh, uh, strictly monolayer. If you have two layers, uh, you, 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 it becomes indirect band gap. You quint the photoluminescence. And their band gap is also not very tunable. It's mostly in the near infrared range. So it's not, it, they are not a good uh, light emitter or light source, visible light source uh, for photonics and optoelectronics. So as a materials chemist, I'm interested in developing new 2D materials uh, that could be potentially uh, more uh, useful or uh, more tunable uh, or with higher performance. So currently we are interested in in, in the halide porosite. This is a superstar materials. I'm sure uh, most of you have heard about this uh, somewhere. So it is uh, it has amazing properties such as uh, extremely long carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime. And they are direct band gap semiconductors. So they absorb light and emit light uh, strongly. And more importantly, they are uh, defect tolerant. That means uh, a small amount of defects will not influence the, the device performance. That is because uh, most of the defect you find in the halide porosity is pretty shallow. It's, it's near the band edge or even inside the connection or valence band. So, so this is a, a key difference from other traditional uh, semiconductor materials. And here I list uh, several uh, parameters uh, of several type of materials. Um, so I use the solar cell efficiency to represent the quality of the, of the materials. So you can see for halide porosite, the power conversion efficiency of a solar cell already reached 25% is uh, uh, very close to single crystalline silicon. Right? But remember these materials uh, uh, is processed using solution uh, processing and the, the device performance achieved using a polycrystalline thin film. Okay? And the, you cannot achieve such high performance using silicon or gallium arsenide unless you make extremely pure, very high quality single crystalline wafers. Right? So, so the, this this data shows that uh, the halide porosity is really promising in terms of uh, high high performance and uh, and the low processing cost. Right? But there's some uh, issue with with halide porosity. Uh, the major issue is the stability. Okay. So these materials, unfortunately, uh, decompose uh, rapidly under uh, several conditions. For example, it reacts with moisture or water and decompose. And uh, this decomposition can also be accelerated by heating or with photo or UV irradiation. So it's not stable under 
moisture, heat, and light. <laughs> and, and there are also, in addition, the content light, there are some toxicity issues uh, there. Yeah. But, but more importantly, not only the chemical instability, there's also uh, some, some ion migration and diffusion issue in this uh, material. So because the halide process gas is an uh, ionic uh, solid, uh, this ionic compound usually has, uh, has, uh, have a lot of uh, uh, vacancies, cation and anion vacancies. And this large amount of vacancies will facilitate uh, ion diffusion and migration. Yeah. So for example here, this is a, a solar cell device. And if you scan the uh, current voltage uh, profile and towards these different directions, you get uh, completely different IV curves. Right? That's mostly uh, induced by the ion migration. And this ion migration will, will also decrease the stability of the device. And actually we can uh, visualize the, the ion migration, a diffusion process by establishing a, 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 a nanowire heterostructures. In this case, it's a cesium light chloride and cesium light bromide nanowire. And if you just heat it up uh, very uh, slightly, about 80 degrees C, after a few hours, you can see uh, the junction no longer exists. So the chlorine and the bromine diffuse into each other uh, very rapidly. So this is a, a key problem for halide perovskite, and this is an intrinsic problem. Um, so no longer, uh, no matter how how good you encaps encapsulate the device, uh, you are not going to solve. Uh, this intrinsic instability. So, so how to address this issue? Uh, one of the promising approach uh, is to use uh, 2D perovskite. Right? So here shows uh, a general formula for 2D halide perovskite. So, so this A and X part are the same with the 3D perovskite. But in addition to that, we introduce uh, a bulky uh, long chain organic uh, cation, ammonium cation. Here. And by inserting these large uh, organic molecules into the perovskite lattice, you can split the perovskite lattice into this layered uh, structure with a thin sheets of the inorganic octahedros in between two layers of uh, organic ligands. And by controlling the, the ratio between different components, you can, you can tune the thickness of the inorganic part uh, in, in, the, in between the organic layers. Right? This is uh, just like a quantum well. Uh, structure. So, so this will open up uh, a lot of opportunities to further uh, control the structure and the property of this uh, this uh, this type of materials. So there's uh, there has been lots of uh, work, pioneer work uh, being uh, done in the past uh, two to three decades. Okay, um, lots of new structures and, and has been synthesized and characterized. So in addition to the tunabilities, those organ organic uh, uh, molecules are usually uh, quite bulky and hydrophobic. So it also improves the stability uh, for, for the pore sky. Right? So although the stability uh, can be improved slightly, uh, the fabrication of uh, epitaxial heterostructures using those 2D, uh, new 2D materials has not been realized uh, in the past uh, because still, still there are some challenges. Right? Uh, so about two years ago, we, we wrote uh, a review article on Chemical Society Review, uh, focusing on the 2D perovskite heterostructures, uh, mostly with graphene and the TMD, uh, TMDC, transition uh, metal detraquinides. Uh, at the end, I point out, so there's maybe a possibility to form, to, 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 to grow those uh, uh, epitaxial heterostructures between two uh, halide perovskites, right, connecting them together if we can address uh, these three uh, important uh, issues. So still here, e even in the 2D process guide, uh, the solid state and diffusion is still a big issue and the stability. So you don't want to destroy the first layer when you grow the second layer. So, so the material's overall stability must be improved and the fabrication uh, condition needs to be uh, optimized. So, so here we, I will uh, introduce uh, 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 some of our recent work in, in this direction. So in, in our first work, we, we first work on the ligands. Right? So we found these ligands uh, may not be good enough. So those are 
uh, uh, commercially available uh, ligands that people has uh, used for a long time. It's uh, BA represent butyl monium. It's a linear carbon chain. And this uh, PEA is a uh, phenylethylene ammonium. So this is a, there's a bending ring here. But those molecules are relatively small, maybe not enough to protect the pore sky. And also they are insulate, insulators. They do not have uh, charge transport property or optical property themselves. So to address this issue, we design uh, uh, a series of new uh, semiconducting uh, organic uh, uh, ligands right, based on the oligo cellophane unit. So we can, so here we, we show that we have two cellophanes, uh, four cellophanes, and uh, and even this uh, this uh, this molecule contain, containing this bundle side diesel unit. So, so now they are even bigger, more bulkier. Maybe protect. Maybe they can protect pore sky better. And uh, they they have their own optical and card transport properties, so they can add uh, new functionality to the to the pore sky. So here we show that we can tune the optical property uh, of the pore sky uh, by using this uh, different ligands. Uh, those images are the optical image are showing some 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 of those crystals, and uh, those images showing the photoluminescence uh, microscope image. Uh, under uh, UV irradiation. So you can see this, uh, these crystals uh, uh, emit different colors. Right? So, so all of the crystals contain the same inorganic part like iodide. Right? The only difference is the organic part. So, so these different uh, optical properties is uh, uh, induced by different band alignment. So by changing the ligand, we can change from type 1 alignment to type 2 band alignment. Uh, reverse type one alignment so between the organic and the inorganic building blocks, and uh, surprisingly, we found uh, indeed the stability improved uh, a lot for these two, uh, for this new two D pore sky. So we simply immerse uh, the films into pure water, and uh, as you can see here, this this is before immersing into water. This is after immersing. So the pore sky is based on butyl ammonium. Uh, Dissolve or decompose immediately within one second, right? but for this new 2D pore sky, it's conjugated ligand. They are much more stable in water. So some of them even uh, stable uh, in water for over a week. So this is XRD profile. Actually, after uh, a week immersed in water, there's still uh, there's no change uh, on the XRD diffraction that's indicating those materials are, are super stable. So with this improved uh, uh, functionality and the stability, now we want to uh, fabricate uh, 2D, uh, lateral, uh, 2D pore sky lateral heterostructures structures using these conjugated ligands. So we use, so here we use two cell fins, 2T by cell fin ligands. And for comparison, we also make these butyl ammonium ligands. So the header structure we, 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 we first uh, prepared is, uh, is this one. We have light bromide in the middle, and then we try to grow light iodide on, along the edge of light bromide. Okay. So this is our proposed structure, and we can also use uh, the BA-based ligand to, 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 to synthesize this bromine LD heterostructure. And here shows the growth uh, process. Uh, it's a solution-based method, uh, quite simple and straightforward. So we make a Light bromide uh, solu precursor solution uh, coated on the surface of a, a, a silicon dioxide substrate. Um, then we evaporate the solvent, so the crystal will grow. The first layer, this bromide layer, and then we simply uh, add another solution containing the light iodide uh, precursors. And then we evaporate the solvent, so we hope they will just grow along the edge. And here shows the optical image. And indeed, so this is after the first layer. This is bromine, uh, brom uh, lead bromine layer, and this is after growth of the iodine layer. You, indeed, you can see uh, the sheets, two D sheets, grow uh, bigger laterally. That's representing something is growing along the edge. Right? And here shows the uh, photoluminescence imaging, and you can see this after the bromine layer. We see the this green uh, photoluminescence from the light iodine, and uh, in this case, the lead bromide do not have any uh, emission. And with uh, these heterostructures, we, we, we further studied uh, their stability. Yeah. So 
we found that uh, for the hate of structures using this 2T uh, conjugated ligands, uh, they are very stable. If we heat it uh, at 100 degrees C uh, for one hour, there's nothing changed. There's no shift of the uh, emission spectrum and there's no obvious change in morphology. But uh, in contrast, if, if we use this uh, BA, uh, built ammonium based uh, hydro structure, right? and this structure, uh, uh, this hydro structure uh, uh, degrade uh, very rapidly at a higher temperature. So after one hour heating, you can see uh, there's uh, th this change of uh, emission color uh, in the crystal and in the PL spectrum you can see a big shift uh, for the uh, emission spectrum. So the, the green part become more blueish and the blue purplish part uh, also become more uh, greenish. There's a small shift in the blue part but there's a big shift in the green part as indicating the iodine and bromine are in interdiffusing into each other and uh, and and this alloy uh, forming uh, along along this uh, lateral direction. So this result is very uh, surprising uh, in the beginning because the only thing we changed is the, the, the organic ligands, right? The ligands is outside the, the inorganic layer, it's only, only on the surface. But how come the change of the, the organic ligands can influence the diffusion in the uh, in the pore sky layer is quite uh, uh, puzzling. Right? So to understand this better, we we we, we collaborate uh, with my, my colleague uh, at Purdue, Professor Brad Savoy, uh, to, to do some DF, uh, molecular dynamic simulations, and we find uh, based on his calculation, uh, we find that uh, this two uh, T based heterostructure is quite rigid, right? even under heating. Uh, this heterostructure still maintain a uh, 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 planar. Uh, planar and uh, uh, not much disorder. Okay. But for this built ammonium uh, BA based uh, heterostructure, the inorganic sheets become uh, more uh, and more disordered uh, when you hit it. And this, this disorder at the interface will facilitate the, the ion migration across this interface. Uh, so this is uh, one possible reason for the, for, uh, for the improved stability for, for this compound. And also, we 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 find that uh, uh, the vacancy, uh, the energy to generating vacancy is different. Right. So imagine we are heating up the the, the solid, and at high temperature, because both uh, the halide and the organic molecules they can they can evaporate, they can leave the the the, the solid. So if we have more vacancies, definitely we have more uh, faster diffusion. Right? So we find that. Uh, to remove a uh, halide uh, ion from the solid, it costs more energy if we use 2T as the surface ligand. And if it costs less energy uh, if we use BA ligand. Okay, so that uh, is another possible reason uh, why uh, in, in the case of 2T, we have uh, uh, suppressed the diffusion. It's because you have less vacancy generation and, and at high temperature. Okay? So those are the two possible uh, explanations for the uh, surprising uh, discovery. And then we, uh, we further carry out uh, high resolution TEM uh, characterizations to understand the, the detailed interface property. Uh, this is collab uh, from a, a collaboration with Professor uh, Yi Yu at Shanghai Tech. Okay. So there, there, there are some challenges in, in, in Halide ProScite uh, for TEM because uh, these materials are extremely sensitive to electron beam. Right? So to address this issue, we, we decreased uh, uh, the acceleration voltage for the electrons and we, we used a conductive TEM grid using carbon nano tube and graphene to, to, to remove the, the, the electrons uh, to reduce the charge accumulation. So by combining these strategies, we were able to get a high quality imaging. And here shows the uh, elemental uh, mapping uh, of a heterostructure. You can see the, the bromine is uh, located in the middle and the aldin uh, is, is, is on, on the surrounding area. And here shows the, a diffraction pattern uh, at the interface. 
So we can see very nice, uh, very nicely the two sets of def electron diffraction pattern are setting together, are sitting together uh, with uh, uh, the same orientation. Right? So that's indicating that uh, both the bromine domain and the iodine domain has the same uh, crystal orientation uh, in the heterostructure. So that's suggesting probably uh, this heterostructure is epitaxial. And we also found that the interface quality is, is quite high. <coughs> so, <coughs> so this is original TEM uh, image. Uh, this part is the bromine region, this part is the iodine region. Uh, it's hard to see the difference between bromine and iodine. So we, we have to use some trick. We, we go to the uh, receptacle space uh, and because there are two different uh, electron diffraction patterns, we can filter out uh, the, the, we can filter the, the contribution from the iodine and the bromine, we can separate them. And then we go back to the real space. Then we can see the contribution from the uh, bromine domain and the uh, iodine domain. So, so this is uh, after the, the, the filter. And we can see that uh, the interface is quite sharp. Okay. It's uh, within, say, 5 to 10 nanometers range. It's not uh, exactly atomically sharp, but it's, I would say, near atomically sharp. So this is already much better than the heterostructures in the nanowires that uh, were reported previously, which, uh, in which the junction width is very diffusive. It's like a 500 to 1 micron nanometers. So this is really, really sharp already. And it's very stable. And next we look into the, the strain and the defect at the interface. So because uh, we use bromine and iodine atoms, they have a, a very different size. Uh, so so the, there's a large, relatively large uh, mismatch, about 6% of this along two uh, crystal directions, right? perpendicular to each other. But, but roughly this is about 6% uh, uh, mismatch. So how does the lattice release this mismatch is, is interesting. So, so by, by looking into the, uh, the near uh, atomic resolution uh, TM imaging, we can find uh, a dislocation form. So if you, in this figure, if you follow the burger vectors, okay, go around this circle, you will find that there must be a dislocation uh, here. At right at the interface, and we found this dislocation uh, appeared uh, uh, periodically, roughly about every uh, fifteen to twenty nanometers. Okay, so that's uh, that this value matches very well with the six percent uh, uh, mismatch of the latest constant. So we believe uh, the misfit dis misfit dislocation is the primary uh, mechanism to release the the string. And, but in some cases, uh, very interestingly, we found this uh, a periodical ripple formation along the, uh, the Elding domain. Okay. And mostly this, this mostly observed in uh, one step, so-called one, one part synthesis method. Basically, we, we blend bromine and Elding together in one part. Uh, and because bromine has lower solubility, so bromine part uh, crystallize first and the alden part crystallize separately uh, continuously. Uh, so using this one part synthesis, we still can get a very high quality interface, but then we, 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 we always observe this, this uh, uh, ripple uh, formation in the alden domain. So, and these ripples are about 50 nanometers high and every appear every 1.6 uh, micrometers. Again, this also matches with the lattice constant mismatch. So that's indicating this is another uh, mechanism to release the, the strain, right? Because now here we believe there's no uh, misfit dislocation or defect form, right? To release this strain, they have to they have to form these ripples. Right? And that's indicating the lattice the interface must be coherent, right? Because there's no, no missing items or no dislocation form. Right? So that's indicating that the, the quality of the interface is ex extremely high. And using this method, next we, we just demonstrate a, a family of this, uh, a library of this uh, type of uh, heterostructures. Uh, we can change the ligands, we can change the metals, 
and we can change the, the metal halide octahedrons. So here we have uh, different ligands. I have the structure in previous slides, BTM, so a little bit different molecule, but, uh, but that's fine. Okay, we, have, we can change the ligands, we can change the metal from tin, uh, making tin light metal structures. We can also make the tin aldide in the middle uh, and uh, on the edge and the lead blooming in the middle. Okay. Um, we can also grow a, a super lattice and multi heterostructures structures uh, by just repeating these growth steps. So we can grow up to eight layers. I can see this A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Um, that's indicating the robustness of our method. So even after several cycles, the, the, the middle layer is still uh, quite stable, uh, not being destroyed by the, by the fabrication of, uh, of the uh, following layers. And finally, we, we proposed that there might be something uh, uh, interesting, uh, maybe some interesting uh, physical properties for those head of structures, because uh, we have, uh, we believe there's a very, uh, this complex head of structure, and not, they are not simply lateral head of structure. So, so along the lateral direction, we can see we have two different inorganic uh, uh, component, right? They form a lateral head of structure with different uh, uh, band structure. But uh, vertically, we have the contribution from the organic molecule and the organic ligands themselves are semiconductors. So now you can form either type one alignment or type two alignment in this case uh, between the organic and the inorganic component, right? That's give you another extra dimensionality to, to control the uh, the electronic property of this heterostructure, structure. And this has not been realized in the past in any other material system. So we, here we just simply demonstrate a simple uh, a diode uh, rectify uh, based on a type two alignment structure based on this one, 14, uh, tin and lead heterostructure. structure. So suggesting those materials are, are very promising for future uh, device integration. Okay, uh, so here I'd like to uh, briefly uh, summarize uh, what I've talked about. Uh, so, so, so basically I, I introduced uh, our uh, discovery uh, on the uh, surprised ion diffusion in the 2D uh, pore skies uh, by using uh, conjugated, rigid conjugated ligands. And using these uh, rigid ligands we can uh, synthesize very stable metal structures uh, with very, very high quality interface. And we believe these materials, uh, they provide a new uh, platform uh, for future uh, optoelectronics and the photonics applications. So uh, that's all for my talk today. Uh, finally, I would like to thank uh, 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 my students and funding agencies. Uh, so most of the heterostructure work was by, uh, done by Dr. Enzheng Shi. He, he would join Westlake University at the end of this year. And uh, our uh, great collaborators, Brad Savoy and uh, uh, EU. And here's our funding agencies. And, uh,